What's the best iPad keyboard case? The Apple Magic Keyboard or the Logitech Combo Touch Keyboard? That's what we're going to find out in today's video. And if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, I'll have links down in the description and in a pinned comment. Let's start with the Magic Keyboard. The iPad snaps into place using incredibly strong magnets. So much so that I'm not concerned about the iPad falling off even if I flip it upside down and shake it around. Seeing this in person is pretty cool because it does look like your iPad is literally just floating above the keyboard. But while that looks really cool, I wouldn't say it's really necessary because it's only raising the iPad up by about a half inch to an inch. And I didn't notice a difference in comfort using the Magic Keyboard versus any of the other keyboards I'm going to show you. In terms of tilt, you do have a pretty limited range, but it is good enough for most use cases. Unfortunately, there's no way to orient this for use with the Apple Pencil, not even to lay it flat. So you really do need to take your iPad out of the case if you want to have an enjoyable experience with the Apple Pencil. There's a USB-C port on the side that routes power through the case into the smart connector on the back of your iPad so you can charge it and connect another peripheral at the same time. Unfortunately, the port on the case is strictly for charging and can't be used with peripherals. In terms of protection, the front and back of your iPad will be pretty well protected as well as the bottom, but the other three edges of the iPad are going to be really exposed and won't be protected at all if you accidentally drop this. The keyboard itself is excellent. It's tactile, it has backlit keys that can have their brightness changed in the settings on your iPad, and while it's a bit cumbersome to change the brightness settings on your iPad, it's really not necessary because the default settings have been great for me in all lighting conditions. The keyboard is also lappable as long as you keep your hands on the keyboard. Once you lift your hands, it starts to fall over. However, if you switch your position to where your legs are more upright, like sitting with your feet up on a couch or a bed, the tipping issue goes away. The touchpad is also excellent. Scrolling works as good as most laptops I've used, and clicking feels great no matter where you press down on the pad, even in the corners. The touchpad also has gesture support, which is extremely useful. The material for the Magic Keyboard feels kind of like a rubberized plastic, and it is a fingerprint, grease, and dirt magnet. It is really hard to keep this thing clean, and it's even hard to clean it when it does get dirty. The other notable downside with the Magic Keyboard is that there are no function keys across the top, which is pretty disappointing, especially at this price point. The Logitech Combo Touch Keyboard offers more protection, more orientations, and a $100 less expensive price tag compared to the Magic Keyboard. But it does have its own disadvantages as well. Let's start with the positives. The keys feel as good as Apple's Magic Keyboard, are also backlit, but add a full row of function keys for quick actions that include a home button, tablet brightness controls, a button to bring up or dismiss the on-screen keyboard, a finder shortcut, backlit key brightness controls, media playback and volume controls, and a lock button. The trackpad is slightly larger than what you get on the Magic Keyboard, supports the same gestures as the Magic Keyboard, and can also be clicked in all corners just like the Magic Keyboard. In terms of materials, Logitech went with a fabric material which is much less likely to get smudgy with fingerprints compared to the Magic Keyboard. The most significant difference between these two keyboards is how the Logitech case works. It's a two-part case that's held together magnetically. The three prongs at the center of the keyboard route to the smart connector so the keyboard can get power. The magnets hold on very well, but you'll notice that the hinge isn't rigid like the Magic Keyboard, so the keyboard will flop down when you pick up the iPad. Even still, you won't have to worry about the keyboard falling off. The iPad itself is secured into a hard rubber-like shell to protect it on all four sides, and there's a notch at the top for the Apple Pencil. I have no fear of my iPad falling off a table with this case on. There's a friction hinge on the back of the case to stand the iPad up, and this can be adjusted to literally any angle you need. And since the case detaches from the keyboard, you can flip it over and use it in writing mode, something that's not possible with the Magic Keyboard. Alternatively, you can rotate the iPad around and snap it back into place backwards on the keyboard if you want to keep the keyboard with you. And when you close the case, magnets hold it closed so it doesn't accidentally open when you're carrying it around. The two main disadvantages to the Logitech keyboard compared to the Magic Keyboard is that you don't get the USB-C pass-through, and it does take up more desk space since you need the stand in the back to keep the iPad up. Bottom line, these are both excellent keyboard cases. If you prefer a super slim case that looks really cool and has a power pass-through and don't mind having to take the iPad off of the case in order to use the Apple Pencil and you don't mind the steep price point, then the Magic Keyboard will be a great buy for you. 
If you prefer to have more protection, a lot more orientations to use the iPad in, and you want a much lower price point, then the Logitech keyboard will be an excellent buy. Let me know what your favorite keyboard is down in the comments below. If you guys are curious about the Apple Smart Keyboard Folio case, then you can check out my full iPad accessories video that I uploaded recently by clicking the card that's sliding out above. If you guys found this video helpful, let me know by dropping a like down below and consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss an upload. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.